Hello, I'm AbiaX Toycat, and previously on my channel, I showed you how to make a fascist village in Minecraft as a way to maximize your emerald returns from villagers. This is a great idea, but the problem with every radical ideology is eventually it will fall, and this is true in Minecraft too, so you need to prepare for that, and that's why in today's video, I want to help you deal with the aftermath, because we're going to stop running around in circles, and instead move this Minecraft village forward with its ideology. We can only stick on our radical plan for so long, and instead, what always tends to happen is something comes and it destroys the village. Village. Is that a pillager raid? Was the pillager raid started by me? Maybe it was, but now I've got this village, it's in my hands, and we need to fix this, we need to bring it back to health. And this is going to be, I guess, the most recent history of all of these History Plus Minecraft weird meme videos, because we're going to be talking about, you know, Marshall Plan and stuff like that. Uh, the reconstruction of Europe was literally 75 years ago, in some parts of Europe, 30 years ago. We're talking about very, very, very recent history, because the question as to how do you rebuild a nation that you are part of the destruction of, I mean, I don't want to spoil a lot, or anything, but I was the one who brought the raids right here because I kind of wanted to, uh, you know, benefit even more from the village. How do you fix a village which you help destroy is the question we're going to be answering in today's video alongside how to fix all of the previous problems. And we're going to start quite simply here. First of all, though, we need to flush out the last remaining part of the threat. And yes, this big threat was actually staying in a cave the entire time. As ridiculous as it is to find an entire pillager raid in a cave, it is a real thing you can find. And uh, yeah, kind of in the same way, when a you know big movement has to let go of power of an entire country, they don't like to do so easily. Something you'll spot about pretty much every modern conflict is that it's very hard to truly win 100% and the, you know, the people who are in control but losing kind of know this and they use this to their advantage. They'll really, really heavily push for a uh, situation where even though, you know, they've lost the fight, they haven't officially lost it and they'll hold on to the very last minute even when it's very clear you're going to win. Eventually, though, you always do. You become the hero of the land that you've, uh, you know, just freed the people from. And then you can start the work on the reconstruction itself. And this has got to start with a really important process. A huge overhaul to the entire sense of the village because... All of the flags from the previous regime need to fall immediately. All of the flags that symbolized all of the goals and the plans, uh, you know, from the people who are previously in charge, they need to go right now. Every single other part of the infrastructure they've built, that can stay in place for now. Even all of the questionable bits, even all of the, you know, kind of weird things that were built on top of, uh, you know, like uh, crimes against humanity, etc. You've got to keep them for now. The most important thing that you do is you remove all of the old flags and you show that there is a different power in charge. A flag is a clear visual way to show that something has changed and if if you change from, say, a green and white flag to a green, white, and red flag, very, very different, because this one's uh, tricolored instead of across the bottom of the flag, uh, that shows a very clear signal to the people living there that something has changed, and that gets them a little bit more ready for the other more radical changes you need to put in place, because let's be honest, this place is a little bit of a dump. We need to make this place significantly better. Because you'd be surprised the amount of difference that a flag can actually make over a people, over a country, over a Minecraft village. Um, the perception of what a people is, is kind of to some extent all wrapped up in the visual representation that is a flag. If you don't believe me, think about how important insert flag here can be to you, or how important insert flag here can you know mean the adversarial people. Because a lot of uh, thoughts, feelings, and emotions can be wrapped up in these, and that's why it's important to change them if you're going to be changing a lot of things. And that's also why it's important to remove the enemy of the people that have been built up over this time. I mean, the only thing that keeps a group together is by having an outgroup. So you remove the previous outgroup. I mean, these black clad people, what's so wrong about them really? Except what you actually do, because you still need to unite people against something, you just change the flag to something else. And in this case, a nice red flag should fit the Marshall Plan and the reconstruction of Europe quite well. Thank you very much. Uh, you've got to fear the red people. I mean, ah, oh, who, who likes the reds? Not me, that's for sure. I know I fear the reds every day. I'm glad we don't live under their system. Next up, you need some big monument to represent this as a victory for your people rather than a loss. You don't want the losing side in any war to think they've actually lost it. We saw what happened with Germany between the world wars as a result. And you know what? We don't want a man with a moustache coming up and uh, killing all of us. So what you do is you make this seem like a victory for the people. They freed their liberators. It wasn't anything to do with me. It was the villagers that did it. And as a result, you need a big monument. In this case, I think a giant hole is the perfect Minecraft monument to hashtag cave update. So we're going to build one for the villagers and we're going to let them believe they built it themselves. 
So now I have myself an over 40 block deep hole right here. It's an impressive hole. It signifies the commitment I'm making to rebuilding this village and making it better than before even. And now what we have to do is we have to execute all the people in charge of the old regime, or because realistically the leaders get to make deals, or they get hung, or they get, you know, kind of trial justice. What you instead do is you find some kind of high up people who are vaguely related to the regime, and you make sure their blood is spilled. You need to make sure that there are deaths and there is a due process to show that, yep, there are some people who died because they deserve to. They did bad things to you, and I, the liberator, I'm, I'm gonna resolve those, uh, you know, feelings. I'm gonna fix those people. I'm gonna make this place wonderful. Starting also with things like these mass beds. These mass beds were necessary to get the villager count up, but now we can use them as an example of how bad the regime was before, and we can fix things. What's that? Are these the exact same beds in the exact same place? Yes, but you'll notice the key and very important difference that now they're patriotic beds, which is much better than before. See how much living standards are improving under us? See how we even killed the war criminal in a big hole that everyone can see all the time? And although it's meant to be a sign of justice, really it's a sign of the man who died in a hole? That is a positive sign for improvement. Now, it's at this point that we should probably address exactly why we're reconstructing the village. Why, time after time again in history, do the, you know, winning side uh, help with the losing side? Why do they even endure great cost to do so? Why does the Marshall Plan exist? Why did America spend so much to rebuild Europe? And the answer is because you need someone to trade with. Trade is an essential part of the modern economy, and if you can't trade with someone, then that's not very good. So, it's worth even building someone's economy up, making them, you know, helping them out a lot, so that they can buy your stuff from them, because, let's be honest, selling Selling melons to villagers in this case, or selling pumpkins, or selling whatever else you need to do is an important part of Minecraft, so you need the villagers to live in a successful place. And in the same way, in the real world, when the United States split in two, they needed to rebuild the South so that the, you know, the North and the South could work together as one country, because no one wants an economically poor part of your own country, no one wants an economically poor part of another country, it just isn't very good business. This is actually one of the reasons that modern war just isn't very common anymore, because at this point in time, it just isn't worth the effort to go for a giant war when it causes giant economic devastation for both of you. Just war isn't profitable anymore for the vast majority of situations, and as time goes on, as in, uh, economies get more and more interlinked, that becomes more true. Places would rather sell you something because they can make money and because it's entirely, uh, you know, your will, than they would take something from you because, again, it just requires much less force, much less will, and much less effort at this point, let's be honest. So one of the most important steps is to take the people who were super raised up by the previous regime, perhaps wrongly, perhaps not, and you need to take them and you need to make serious examples of them. I mean, the very idea of war crimes and the Geneva Conventions and so on and so forth is that they are crimes you can commit during war, but you know, during war it's hard to enforce those things, so afterwards it's important that you're shown to enforce them on at least someone, and although in the case of Italy at least, like, you know what, guy was hung by the people himself, in this case we still need to have someone who's a clear victim as a result of what's happening, so maybe we bit dig a giant pit in the ground, and maybe we remove the block below our villager, and maybe he falls to his death. I'm, I'm just saying, a couple of executions, never did anyone wrong. If we're being specific, then it actually does do some people wrong, and those people are the ones who are falling down on the pits, right? <laughs> But still, I mean, they accepted their position of better villager under the previous system. They thought that they could be better than their fellow men and brothers, and they did some bad things as a result. And you know what happens to them? This is what happens to them. I think the most important thing, though, when it comes to rebuilding a nation that you want to be, uh, you know, one of your friends, is not the necessarily the process of executing the people who did the bad things. I mean, that's obviously the most fun bit, and that's why you're gonna do it at least a few times, right? But the most important bit in actually making the nation a long-term friend of yours is actually to make sure that you rebuild their economy and that you make their uh, country uh, close to what it was before. War destroys countries, and you need to fix that country, even though it hurts the idea of like, wait, so they spent a lot of money trying to kill us, and now we give them a lot of money. Uh, the truth is, in the long run, it's better for security. So the way we're going to rebuild this village is by pouring resources in. The first step, if you want to expand a village, make it far bigger than it was before, is to add new beds, of course. Ideally, you'd have a nice place to put them, but back when Minecraft uh, breeding was based on doors, I had a lot of doors around the edge, and we can kind of use this big communal area as just a place for the beds to go. So every you know, three blocks or so, we can have an extra bed, and these do technically count as functioning beds that villagers can sleep in. So boom, now we can place a lot of beds very quickly, and we can expand the potential population of the village very fast, even if it's not the most ideal conditions. I mean, you got to make it look ideal. You can sell it as like, oh, it's a historic 
historic property. But you can see, immediately after we place those beds down, even though they're terrible beds, now some of our villagers can start to breed and they can expand the population of the village almost immediately. Some villagers are going to require some food because uh, the two things that you need for a villager to make another villager is you need a bed and you need some food. Just, just like me, am I right? Oh, also you need both villagers to want it. As you can see, this villager is making some moves on the villager that doesn't want it. And sadly, that is not a successful strategy. One of my favorite little accidents is I got these two guys to breed, even though they have this little house right here. Oh, they're breeding again. Jesus, they are going like crazy. Uh, but you can see how they've made a little baby villager. That baby village will actually escape their building, even though they can't, which is beautiful because it means we can let, you know, again, babies out we, while still keeping them contained in the place where we know they're going to be. I, I didn't think villagers could breed on such a fast schedule. Like, they literally bred twice in a row. Now we've got two new villagers. Three, it, uh, indeed. How fast can they make new ones? <laughs> is it literally as fast as we can give them food? Is this a bug or is this just a, a happy time? You know, they've been stuck in here for a long time. They've been wanting to do this. They just haven't found the beds. And now they apparently can. Now, if you're curious as to how to lock villagers in the same room, it can be really easy. I mean, there's a lot of tricky ways to do it by nudging them slowly or pulling them in boats. But the easiest way I find is like, okay, wait for the villagers to make babies. Those babies go to sleep for a full 10 minutes every night. And uh, during that 10 minutes, you can just block off the doorways and you can make this a little sealed, sealed entrance to a new factory. Because you know what? We have farming villagers. You know what? We have, uh, obviously, the armor, uh, the toolsmith villagers. We get a lot of diamond, uh, you know, diamond pickaxes that way. Diamond pickaxes with enchantments. But I think I'm going to want some armor smiths. Armor smiths use the blast furnace as their major tool. So all we have to do is make some uh, easy blocks just like this. We'll make it out of acacia. So instead of doorways, we just have some of these blocks. We, for now, we'll make it two blocks tall, but later we can remove these blocks right here. And boom, we've got ourselves a pretty effective little, uh, you know, like armor smith room. We've even gone iron golem watching over our babies. How cute. The iron golem is actually stopping me from finishing my little walls in this place because I need to obviously seal them off and for some reason the eye golem is just bouncing next to this endlessly and I can't really punch him away because he's an iron golem and he I feel like he'd like nothing more than for me to do that so he can beat me up ah oh no we left a block on that side so they can just climb over the damn you know you make one mistake and you regret it forever apparently we just gotta lock him back in we just gotta stop this happening oh god oh no no you're not getting out you're not getting out I disagree but yeah, we're going to craft a bunch of blast furnaces. I mean, they're pretty expensive. But the investment that we put in now will be repaid a hundredfold after things get productive. Which first of all requires waiting on these children to grow up. So here's the deal. We need to circulate some money in the villager economy. And although we can sell them things, that's one of the ways to get things done. The much better way is just to buy things off the villagers. It sucks having to spend nine emeralds sure. But it's the easiest way to circulate money around the villager economy. And so it's precisely what we'll do today. Just to get the villagers up to a point where they can sell us not just iron chest plates. But things like bells. Really, that's their second level. God, that's a bad trade. By the way, sorry to interrupt, but if you're enjoying the video, I'd like it if you subscribed because obviously every YouTuber wants you to subscribe. That's why they all mention it. But the reason I say it is because not only are you more likely to see future videos from this channel, but also, I'll be honest, I'm just trying to hit a personal goal this year. Most people who watch my videos aren't subscribed. And if you'd like to join the few that are to help me hit 2 million in the course of this year, that would be something I really appreciate. But the reason I'm here in an entirely different village now is because I'd like to talk about, uh, you know, the fact that, you know, I've been somewhat critical about the idea of the Marshall Plan so far. I mean, it seems like that, at least I'm making fun of it. Um, but I want to show you the alternative, because I mean, sure, uh, replacing something and putting kind of something kind of similar in place seems like a bad idea. Shouldn't you use uh, the opportunity to rebuild from scratch in a bigger, better way? But here's the alternative strategy that was used in Eastern Europe, where the Marshall Plan didn't take effect because the Soviet Union didn't allow it. The strategy that was used all over Eastern Europe was to take the old populace that they felt shouldn't be there anyway, and to just kind of uh, take them away. I mean, sure they've got homes there, sure they've got things that they can't take with them, but let's just take away the old villagers that, as you can see, are all plains or swamp villagers. These swamp villagers actually came from that very swamp, and now they're having jungle villagers here in this jungle, so isn't it fit that their jungle villagers are the one that go back to the swamp? And we ship in some brand new villagers. I mean, sure, they're jungle villagers that don't have a connection to the land. I mean, they look entirely different, but they're going to rebuild the village from scratch. And that's that's a real thing. They moved around a lot of borders and people groups to make this happen. Most, fa most famously in Kaliningrad, but you know what? You don't care about the history. What you do care about, though, is the fact that not only did they move around all the people groups, 
But instead of giving money to help repair things, the Soviets actually demanded reparations from the nations that were under their umbrellas, as well as demanding that they not take money from the Marshall Plan aid. You know, that's a political thing, sure. But uh, yeah, so instead of actively giving the villagers emeralds to help them trade, uh, actively taking them away and saying, hey, it cost me a lot to bring you into this world. Why aren't you grateful, damn it? Why won't you give me, you know, like, <laughs> anyone else have a parent like that? That was, that was the Soviet Union in the post-World War II period because they had just lost a quarter of their people, to be fair. But that's an unrelated point. Let's get back to the, the, the Marshall Plan video thing. In conclusion, it kind of is a very cynical thing to repair any village in Minecraft or any Western or Central European state, uh, knowing that you're going to reap the trade benefits from it when things do go well. But that doesn't mean that it's not a good thing for those people that you're trading with. Uh, you know, the, the alternative is a real thing and as justifiable as I'm sure you can make that, um, just because something is not the perfect version of itself, it doesn't mean it's terrible. Sure, just because we've installed a giant death hole in the center of the village that people regularly fall into, oh, in this case, pillagers. But even though there's a giant death pit, doesn't it look beautiful if you see all these uh, emerald teas that we've been able to craft because we are rich in this village. Look at all these emeralds uh, that we have traded for because we are now uh, one of the wealthiest nations in the world. And in case you're curious about Italy, even though Italy had like a bad few decades in the in the 90s and, and the 2000s and the, the 2010s and probably the 2000s, let's be honest, they've not had a, a great 2020 either. Um, you know, would they be worse off without financial aid? 100%. And maybe there's a lesson in that. Or maybe what we should really take from this video is that no one should do anything ever and that foreign influence isn't important because who cares about those darn foreigners, am I right? Anyway, speaking of darn foreigners, I hope you all enjoyed this video by someone who for about 88% of the audience is from a foreign country. Wow, if you did, I wanna quickly just get ahead of something and say, actually, by the time we finished that, I recorded this video like nine months ago, like 85% and then just never finished it. So if you noticed a gap, that's because like a slight difference, it's because literally most of the year has passed and what a year it was, huh? Um, and would you like to see more videos in the year of 2021? I bet you would. If you could subscribe, that'd be a great way to see more of these things. Perhaps turn on notifications. And if you really want to stay up to date, you can also follow me on Twitter at IBXToyCat. It's the other half of YouTube. I really recommend you follow any YouTube you care about. Not just me, but anyone else there. So you can see what's going on outside of YouTube. Anyway, this has been a video on the internet. And I'll see you all in another one, probably. Unless I die in a house fire tonight. Goodbye. so much and I'm recording a video so I give myself permission to just burn them. Oh, life is so much easier when you do that.